Dr. Katrina Christensen argues that Senator John Hoven is concerned more with enriching himself than North Dakota. This as the Dem NPL party receives big out-of-state contributions, including from liberal billionaire George Soros. Josh Many sits down with Democratic NPL candidate for U.S. Senate, Dr. Katrina Christensen. North Dakota Democratic NPL candidate Dr. Katrina Christensen joins us now to discuss her bid for U.S. Senate. Dr. Christensen, thank you very much for being here. Thank you for having me. So, Dr. Christensen, you recently tweeted a New York Times article that kind of lays out an argument saying that Hoven is one of 97 congressional members to do some big money bids that look to be a conflict of interest. In his case, He's investing hundreds of thousands of dollars of, of uh, en energy stocks while he sits on two energy committees. With that said, where does Hoven fall short in terms of representing the common person in North Dakota? Well, I think that, you know, one of the reasons why I got into this race is because Hoven has been in cruise control for the last 12 years because he has not been investing in adding ag processing to the state of North Dakota. He squandered 12 years without getting us uh, an oil refinery in the state of North Dakota. He's not serving the workers out in the oil field. He's not serving the farmers and he's not serving the communities that support those industries by not fighting for those things that we need in the state to really thrive. Instead, he's been very, very focused on growing his wealth. I think that the New York Times article said that he invested somewhere between $300,000 and $500,000 um, after um, meetings in, in on after the energy committee meetings. And so it's really critical that um, North Dakotans be aware that he has you know, only been the author of seven bills that have passed since the time that he uh, was elected senator out of 293 that he's proposed. That's not even one bill a year. What you can see there is that when John Hoven graduated from Dartmouth, he got a bank. But when North Dakotans elect me as their senator, somebody who when they graduated from college got a job, they'll see somebody that can actually work for them and bring dividends for the state, not themselves. Now the Dem NPL has gotten a lot of contributions from out of state, George Soros being one of them. Other issues like Biden's student loan plan to give forgiveness. Now you're a college professor. Where do you stand on that and would you rather the Bank of North Dakota do that? But more importantly, do you think the national democratic platform is hurting your chances? So I, to, to answer your first question regarding um, the Biden's um, student loan forgiveness plan, I think that it is 100% appropriate for the Biden administration to do what they can in the face that Congress is essentially ineffective at governing. Right, they are ineffective at stopping, you know, um, predatory lending um, in colleges. They are ineffective when it comes to regulating um, interest rates and those sorts of things around student loans. So, absolutely, 100%, Biden's appropriate doing what he's doing. And I think the people that are very critical of the student loan forgiveness probably just need to think about it more as a tax break, right? So, what essentially you're doing is you're allowing people who have student loans to free up some of their income to do other things for the first time, whether it's have a child or have buy a house or you know buy a car, right? There are all sorts of things that um, are freed up now for a good portion of our society to participate. Now, I recognize that in North Dakota, it's the Bank of North Dakota that, that needs to look at that. The Bank of North Dakota is very profitable. It is there to benefit the people of the state, much like land grant institutions are supposed to be benefiting the state. And so I think it's really appropriate that the board at the bank really look at, well, what is it that we can do for our board or our borrowers? All right, Dr. Katrina Christensen, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. With the November election looming 